makes a legendary journalist? Gravitas? Honesty? Eyes so piercing they can give you a nose ring? No, it's adaptability. And no one's better at that than Tucker Carlson. Man of a thousand faces, but also somehow only one face. Tucker Swanson McNear Carlson. His father was a journalist and U.S. ambassador to the Seychelles, a popular vacation spot for people's money. His stepmom was an heiress to Swanson Frozen Foods, a heritage he still pays tribute to with his trademark frozen facial expressions. He has a brother, Buckley Swanson Peck Carlson. You don't really need to know anything about him, but how about those names, huh? Others might have tried to downplay their wealth, but downplaying was never Tucker's style. Well, I'm like extraordinarily loaded just from like money I, you know, inherited. I've never needed to work. He didn't need to work. We could be living in a world where Tucker Bronson McChad Carlson isn't on TV every night. But luckily for America, that didn't happen. After college, Tucker took his talents to journalism, rising to prominence as the liberals' favorite conservative. Everyone liked him. He seemed normal and unwhite supremacisty. Tucker Swan Lake McNordstrom Carlson took that palatable conservatism to CNN and PBS, eventually becoming the perpetually bow tied co host of CNN's Crossfire. There, he helped steer cable news away from meaningful discourse and more towards people shouting talking points at each other, like a housewife's reunion. It was going great until one day when a Comedy Central extremist infiltrated the set and wrecked havoc. Your partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. Now, this is theater. I mean, it's, it's it is, obvious. No, no, it is. How old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. So after surviving that ugly attack, Tucker made the difficult decision to move on. Desperate times called for desperate Tuckers. So the butterfly emerged from yet another cocoon and flew to MSNBC, where he was both respected and likable. Someone you could definitely trust, like Matt Lauer. You know who was pals with him back then? Rachel Maddow. It's weird to see now, like Emperor Palpatine going to brunch with Baby Yoda. Carlson's low-rated MSNBC gig didn't last long, but his personal brand only grew stronger. He was not going to rest until the world knew all 36 of his names. Having flunked out of TV twice, Tucker Seamus McDuck Carlson began rebuilding his journalism career by working with one of radio's most respected broadcasters, Bubba the Love Sponge, where he was able to channel his inner shock jock. I love women, but they're extremely primitive. If you're talking to a feminist, and she's giving you, you know, well, you know, men really need to be more sensitive and just, you know, actually, you just need to be quiet and kind of do what you're told. I'm not defending underage marriage at all. I just don't think it's the same thing exactly as pulling a child from a bus stop and sexually assaulting that child. The rapist in this case has made a lifelong commitment to live and take care of the person. So I... it is a little different. Iraq is a crappy place filled with a bunch of, you know, yeah. semi-literate keep primitive very, monkeys in Canada. I called them our retarded cousin. She just does seem a little <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you said it. I'm just agreeing with you. One thing couldn't be denied. Tucker Carlson said all that out loud on purpose, knowing other people would hear him. Plenty of people would be proud to coast on calling women the C-word, but not Tucker. In 2010, he remade himself yet again as the public intellectual behind the new website, The Daily Caller. Soon, he was ready for his most important role yet, Fox News superhero. Tucker Vanderpump McRib Carlson was home, and this time, he became something completely new a man of the people. Democrats have become the party of the elite professional class, eager to lecture you about open borders, global warming from their gated communities. The most privileged people in our society shouting down at Trump's voters. Yeah. Damn you working class Americans, you must need to be quiet. Tucker, you went to the elite schools of this country. I did, I what did. We should focus and that's why on I know it's a scam. Major- it was the performance of a lifetime, an aristocrat who spent his entire adult life working in media, acting as if he had just crawled out of the coal mines and sat in front of a TV camera. And Carlson wasn't afraid to use his new clout to uplift the most needy among us, people who hate immigrants. 
Our leaders worship multiculturalism because all cultures are equal, except that they're not all equal. Our civilization is superior, and we need to defend it. Latin American countries are forcing demographic change on this country at a rate that American voters consistently say they don't want. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Isn't it crowding your country the fastest way to despoil it, to, to pollute it? Tucker Swamp Thing McGruff Carlson was like a beautiful reverse Statue of Liberty, telling everyone to get their tired huddle masses out of here. But any Fox News host could hate immigrants. In fact, most of them did. So Tucker upped the ante. How precisely is diversity our strength? Do you get along better with your neighbors or your coworkers if you can't understand each other? or share no common values? White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. This may be a lot of things, this moment we're living through, but it is definitely not about black lives. And remember that when they come for you, and at this rate, they will. We have every right to fight to preserve our nation and our heritage and our culture. In the skull of the African here, the area associated with submissiveness is larger than any human or any other subhuman species on planet Earth. Tucker was on fire like a cross on a black family's lawn. But as 2021 began, he was once again restless for a change. So Carlson put on yet another hat, this time made of tinfoil. Democrats rigged the election in front of all of us and nobody did anything about it. And what about this vaccine? Why are Americans being discouraged from asking simple, straightforward questions about it? Questions like, how effective are these drugs? Are they safe? And by the way, how much are the drug companies making off this stuff? The Biden's affection is totally real. It's in no way part of a slick PR campaign devised by cynical consultants determined to hide the president's senility by misdirection. <laughs> Not at all. Their love is as real as climate change. A little nuts? Well, maybe. But unlike the moon landing or a 44-year marriage, you can't fake ratings like this. And while yes, at least one person did sue for defamation, a judge dismissed the case on the grounds that any reasonable viewer knows that even things Tucker says are facts are not actual facts. So whatever the future holds for him, one thing we know is that Tucker, Severus, McFly, Carlson will do it with a smile or whatever's going on there. Fox knew the election wasn't stolen, but they said it anyways? That's not shocking. <laughs> if Brian Kilmeade ever completed a Wordle, that would be shocking. <laughs> now, I'm not shocked. But I will say, I am very entertained. Because of this lawsuit, a bunch of Fox News hosts had to release their text messages. And y'all know this. Yeah. No, 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 you know this. There's LinkedIn you. <laughs> And then there's iMessage you. That's the deep, dark underbelly of who you really are. And boy, oh boy, were these iMessages good. New court filings show that in private, Fox hosts Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and Sean Hannity were brutally ridiculing the claims of election fraud and the people who were making them. Top Fox hosts privately trashed the Trump legal team for lying. As Tucker Carlson texted Laura Ingram, Sidney Powell is lying. It's insane. Ingram responded, Sidney is a complete nut. Tucker Carlson referred to Donald Trump as a demonic force. The private mockery also targeted Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani. Sean Hannity wrote Giuliani is acting like an insane person, while Ingram remarked, such an idiot. Oh my God. Do you realize what this means? These people are secretly sane. <laughs> they also don't respect anyone they have on their show. These guys are texting each other all day about how bullshit Fox News is. Their group chat is basically MSNBC. <laughs> but out of everything we learned about Fox News, there was one text that came out in Discovery that truly freaked me out. It's when Tucker Carlson said Fox News had to be more supportive of Donald Trump's election claims. Tucker Carlson wrote his producer, Alex Pfeiffer. Do the executives understand how much credibility and trust we've lost with our audience? We're playing with fire for real. An alternative like Newsmax could be devastating to us. Do you understand what he's saying here? He's saying, if I don't say this bullshit, my viewers will leave me. This whole time we thought Fox News was manipulating its viewers. 
But it turns out the viewers were manipulating Fox News. So just think of it like this, okay? Tucker Carlson is a moral vacuum, a hole, if you will, who glorifies election deniers. So a glory hole. And his viewers expect him to please them with his mouth. And he's constantly terrified that they'll find a new, more satisfying glory hole. And that's why Tucker Carlson will never stop sucking. This is The Daily Show, so let's talk about Fox News. <laughs> They're dealing with a big lawsuit right now, and because of it, a bunch of Fox News hosts had to give up all their private texts. So we've been finding out what they really think about Donald Trump. And it's hilarious. According to court documents, host Tucker Carlson texted a producer on January 4th, 2021. We are very, very close to being able to ignore Trump most nights. Referring to Trump, Carlson says, I hate him passionately. I can't handle much more of this. Carlson added, we're all pretending we've got a lot to show for it because admitting what a disaster it's been is too tough to digest. But come on, there really isn't an upside to Trump. Oh, oh, that's fighting words, oh! White on white crime, let's go! <laughs> All right, I know this looks bad, but their makeup sex is gonna be so much hotter. <laughs> you know, this is so embarrassing for Fox News. If they wanna keep their shit quiet, they should do what the crack dealers do. Use a payphone. <laughs> Yo, it's Tucker. Listen, black lives matter. They really do. They really do. All right, hit me back on my burner. I'm enjoying this, though. I have never seen someone's private text that was so opposite from their public persona. This is like finding out Nikki Haley has a black sin. She got texts like, oh, hell no. Y'all ain't coming at Nimrata like that. <laughs> Sorry, boo-boo. Let's begin with Fox News, which yesterday agreed to pay $787.5 million for saying Dominion voting machines helped Joe Biden steal the election. Although, now that more details of the settlement have come out, it turns out it's not all bad news for Fox. The deal sparing Fox from what would have been a very high profile trial with some of the network's own stars likely testifying. Dominion's legal team says there will be no on air apologies or retractions on Fox News. In a statement, the network is saying the settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. That's right, high journalistic standards like this. The green M&M got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm happy for Dominion, but Dominion was not the only injured party here. What about, you know, our faith in democracy? There are people who will not trust elections for the rest of their lives, and I have to talk to those people. <laughs> I'm going to be arguing with them at Trump rallies every four years for the rest of my life. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not naive. I didn't expect this lawsuit to restore our country's faith in elections, or even for me to get a little cashola. No. But I was at least hoping to get a couple weeks of joy out of seeing Sean Hannity up there on the stand, sweating through his shirt like a beach manatee. <laughs> would that have saved democracy? I don't know. But it would have been nice to see. <laughs> And we're not gonna get any of that. They don't even have to apologize on air. And frankly, we deserve that, bare minimum. Yes, you deserve that. And you know what? If the settlement won't give it to you, then I shall. There's much fallout this evening, and there will be for months. We are admitting that we lied to you for saying the wrong things about the, the 2020 election. Now, why is that? Well, the truth is Donald Trump lost the election. And no, we didn't tell you because we don't care what you think. Now we have to pay hundreds of millions of dollars. We were wrong. We are completely irresponsible, and we're sorry, America. I'm sorry for repeating something that was untrue. I'm sorry, I just gotta take a quick break mm -hmm. and go cry in a closet while squeezing a stuffed animal. Thank you, Tucker, well said. You know that 
that stupid look that's always on Tucker Carlson's face? <laughs> good reason for it. This just in to CNN. Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. The right wing network just announced the two have parted ways. CNN senior media reporter Oliver Darcy is here with more on this. What are you learning? He was out on Friday. Will we see him say goodbye? We're not going to see him say goodbye. This is really stunning news coming from Fox. They say his last show was April 21st. They put out a very short statement. They say they thank him for his service. And that's it. That's all we know right now. Wow. Wow. I can't believe that a network that's so opposed to gender affirming surgery just cut off their own dick. <laughs> Tucker was forced out by Rupert Murdoch, which is pretty ironic. Tucker spent so many years saying that Mexican people were coming to take our jobs away. Turns out he should have been worrying about Australians. <laughs> and we still don't know exactly what led Rupert Murdoch to fire his network's biggest star, but reportedly he was concerned over Carlson's conspiracy theories about January 6th. So let this be a lesson to everybody. If you try to topple America's democracy, you can stay on TV for two more years and that's it. <laughs> But whatever the reason was, Tucker's firing is going to leave a huge white power vacuum at Fox. <laughs> and I'm glad he's gone. But if I'm being honest, I'm also a little nervous about what he's going to do next, you know? It's like after Papa John got fired, you just knew he was out there somewhere working on a pizza that gives you even worse diarrhea. <laughs> Yesterday, Carlson got fired from his job at Fox News, and it was a huge surprise to everyone, including Tucker. <laughs> Apparently, they only told him 10 minutes before announcing it publicly, which is so cold. I mean, that's barely enough time to pack up all his Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> Not to mention, he was Fox's most popular anchor, and they still fired him. That'd be like if MSNBC fired... Uh, well, uh, imagine if there was a show people watched on MSNBC. It would be like firing them. And look, I know people love making fun of Tucker, but just, just put yourself in his shoes. Say you're this massive piece of shit with no real friends, and you gotta giggle like a Tickle Me Elmo and a dumb floppy haircut, and you always have your mouth hanging open like you're drying your teeth. I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, uh, Tucker's an asshole. <laughs> now, we still don't know exactly what got Tucker fired. Maybe it was election lies that cost Fox News $787 million. Uh, maybe it was insulting his bosses in private texts. Maybe it was his overall vibe of creepy dad driving the babysitter home. <laughs> or maybe it was this. The Daily Beast reports that Tucker's repeated use of the C word was a key factor in his demise. According to text messages from the Dominion lawsuit, Tucker referred to Trump lawyer Sidney Powell as the C word, and a former producer at his show alleges she heard the word around the office constantly. Female politicians who came on the show were mocked. There were debates about who they'd rather sleep with. C word all the time. <laughs> They use the C word all the time? Like, how do you use the C word at the office all the time? <laughs> oh, Susan's taking lunch orders? Uh, tell that I'll just have a salad, hold the <laughs> You know what, do you want to share a <laughs> For the audience at home, I know that just got bleeped. I just said the word <laughs> But you know what, you know what, it's okay. Tucker's allowed to say the C word because he is one. <laughs> no one's heard from Tucker since his surprise firing on Monday, except the pillow he's been screaming into. <laughs> and it turns out there may be a good reason for that. Fox News executives reportedly have a dossier of dirt on him. 
Yeah, to keep him from attacking the network. That's right, they apparently have him saying the most vile things you can imagine. And the way they compiled it, and this is genius, is by turning on his television show and pressing record. <laughs> Last night, Tucker re-emerged for the first time since he was fired, recording a personal video from his business sauna. Good evening, it's Tucker Carlson. One of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country, kind and decent people. The other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television are. They're completely irrelevant. They mean nothing. In five years, we won't even remember that we had them. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. See you soon. Wow, good for Tucker. Even though he's isolated in a remote cabin somewhere, he's still getting his message out, just like the Unabomber. <laughs> And you know what, you know what, let's give Tucker credit for not saying the C word once during this video. Bravo, Tucker, I know. I know that was really hard for you. Although it is funny how he said, when you step outside the noise, people are actually pretty nice. Buddy, you are the noise. Your entire show was you being mean to people, trans people, immigrants, women, lady M&Ms. Complaining about people being mean is like Guy Fieri complaining about how there are no salad shows. <laughs>